Hey, on this week's show, we're gonna be going right back to the river, fishing catfish, and hopefully we'll have time to fish flatheads, which I always call the halibut of fresh water. Hey, we got our good friend, Quinton Counselor. Hey, buddy. How are you, you doing? Know, what do you got here, Quinton? Uh, gator tail, 37 horse, okay. EFI. Yup. With a gator tail, 18 foot boat. Now, a boat like this, you guys, you know, the deal is you can't go and catch bluegills or dogfish and transport them. So the nice part about a boat like this, we can get where most people can't go. This thing is unbelievable. Literally, I've seen this thing go across land. I've never seen a boat that could take as much abuse as this thing can. It just goes and goes. The nice part is we get back in these back bayouts and we catch our bluegills, we catch our dogfish, and then we can go back out into the main part of the river without leaving the river itself. So that's the key to having a boat like this is getting where other people can't go. So let's see what this thing can do. Hey, and stay tuned. Hopefully we're gonna catch some big catfish and maybe a couple of big flatheads tonight. I'm excited, I'm pumped. Let's see what this boat can do. Okay, I got the rotten garlic uh, punch bait on the other one. Now this is the, the little stinkers, and this is by Uncle Josh here. I'll tell you, this is the bloody minnow. And the nice part about this kind of stink bait is that it's got the consistency in the texture that it really, you could cast it out there and you don't have to use a tube. And I'll tell you, that stuff stays on there a long time versus the other stuff is more of a pasty stuff where you have to jam it inside a tube like this in which works fine but uh, you know when the water really gets warm it seems like that stuff really disappears fast so the nice part about the punch bait is that if you can see that in there look at that the texture of that stuff right there i mean it is really some thick stuff it's almost like it's got hair in there but i think that's cattails myself i think that's what i heard and mixed in with the bait so it really helps it hold on onto the bait itself onto the hook I should say so whew, boy, that's not my knife man put the lid on that thing that thing's oh I worked at a wastewater plant for a while and it didn't even smell that bad at all you know I don't think this stuff is really, I don't think this stuff is that bad at all. I don't know what you guys think, <laughs> what you guys are talking about. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I got the first one the other day in the night. Look at that. That's what they call a fiddler. You know, it's interesting, I just changed my hook on there and I was getting a lot of tap taps and my trouble hook was a little bit too big. So, Quentin, I know we can do better than that. Ooh, I got another one, but yeah, it's not very big. It might be a little bit bigger than that last one. Just, again, on that punch bait, yep, just a little, my dad always called these little silver tails, young catfish. A little bit bigger, and a lot of guys like to eat them. A little bit bigger on that boy. I went with that new style hook with that spring on there. And I'll tell you what, I haven't missed one though. You know the interesting thing of what the way Quentin's got his lines laid down there. He'll tell you why he's doing it. But you know when it comes to fishing, it's amazing. I never, I've been catfishing all my life, and I've never really realized that. I usually always stick my rods in the rod holders because I'm afraid of losing them all the time. So the reason you have the lines right down flat is because of why? Because they can't feel restriction that way. If you have your pole like in a rod holder, say yep. up at a 45, you can, they feel that resistance and they, they just drop it. They, they feel that and they say, well, it's not worth it. Right. But this way, it's basically like you're pulling a dead piece of fish off the bottom of the, you know, the, the river. Right. So. Very interesting. Yep. Then when you get into the flatheads, then they, they're very particular on what they take. 
So if it's at a 45 degree angle, then they feel that they're, they, they suck just like a walleye. They, they suck it in real quick and if yep. they don't like it, they spit it right back out. Flatheads are the same exact way. You know, in the flatheads, wouldn't you say that there is a massive amount of pressure on these, these fish with all the bank liners and, and set liners, and then you have a lot of guys like us that like to just come out and fish them too. So, you know, them fish in order for them to get, you know, 50 pounds. I saw one last year, a friend of ours uh, brought over a 54 pounder. I mean, that fish was, that's just an absolutely, I can't imagine how old, old that is. And, you know, you've gotten a couple of big ones yourself already, haven't you? Yep. A couple 44s. Four, geez. Yep. I mean, a 44 inch, or what does you think that weighs as far as poundage wise? Probably a good 40 pounds to 38 pounds. Yeah, that's a big fish. I wonder how old a fish like that is. It's funny, all the fishing I do, and people start talking about when you're catching catfish, nobody wants to handle a, a catfish. You know, they're always thinking that the stinger is going to get them, and it's really, you know, not a stinger. Everybody thinks that the whiskers here, and that's the way that they sense everything and feel the way through the dark, murky water. The thing you have to watch out on catfish, basically, and it's not so much the bigger ones because they dull down, is the side fins on them right here. What happens is that this is like a razor right here. It's like a saw blade. And what happens most of the time, they're either going to poke you right here. When they're young, they're real sharp. Obviously, it's to, to you know, protect them so they can grow up against predators. But what happens is when you throw them back, these rakers is what I call them right on the side right here on the pectorials, you know. Um, that's what's going to get you. That's what they call a stinger. So it's really, it's not the whiskers right here. It's just the fins right here. And it's kind of like a bee sting, you know, when they catch you like that. When you, and most of the time when you're throwing them back, because you're throwing them like this, you go, you rub your fingers right across that raker right there, and that's what cuts you, and you get that poison in your skin. And again, basically what I do is I handle them like this all the time. I got a good firm grip on them. I got the pectorials in my finger, and I'm pushing them forward so they can't go anywhere. So I'm in control, and when I go to let them go, I don't throw them. I just get them over the water like this, you know, and drop them just like that. That's the proper way to release a catfish so you don't get stung. You know, normally when you're fishing stink bait, you know, this we call punch bait, you don't get a lot of really big ones. You know, if you get one that's, a, you know, a channel cat that is, uh, you know, let's say if it's 10 pounds, that's a pretty decent sized channel cat on the, the, the stink bait. Uh, versus the cut bait, it seems like once you say quitting that you get a lot more sizable catfish oh, yeah. yep. off of that. Yeah. So I'm, a, I'm looking for numbers myself right at, ooh, at this time. Look at that rut. Oh, oh. He's just tasting it. Chomp, 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 chomp. Interesting how you like to keep that line down. I'm going to try it. Ooh, he's on this one right away. I got a bonanza here. Got to get one in the bowl. Boy, ever since I started laying my lines down a little bit lower to the water, I've gotten a lot more bites. I haven't connected yet, but man, I never, like I said, you know, when it comes to fishing, I fish every day, and I'll tell you, I say it over and over, you're always learning. Anybody that thinks they know it all about, if you know, think you know it all about fishing, boy, you got a long ways to go. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize when you start talking about catfish and especially the flatheads, you know, how sought after they are. You know, I always say this myself, I think a flathead, you know, is uh, definitely the halibut of fresh water. The meat is real firm and snow white and uh, has, you know, it's a solid, it's not like a real flaky fish. Oop. Oop. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I was like, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs>
Boy, that did not take long at all. Oh, yep. nice fish. That's a, a flathead. Nice, nice fish. That's a flathead, Larry. Nice fish. Oh, maybe a catfish. Nice fish. Boy, I tell you, I just threw that thing in there, you guys. It wasn't even in there for a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Quit. <laughs> oh, man. He almost took the rod. I'm used to having rod holes. He almost took the rod right out of the boat. There we go. Nice job. <laughs> Boy, I <laughs> thought my rod was. I mean, if it wasn't for the reel hitting the side of the boat, it would have been long gone. You know, I tell you something, that fish really, really grabbed that. Now, this is a channel cat. You know, a flathead, tell us the difference between a channel cat and a flathead so everybody knows. Flathead had a square tail, this is a fort. And then a flathead is like a camel, army camel like type looking thing. And these are a lot shorter. There's only four instead of five or six actually. And then the real flathead, okay. obviously way flathead, yeah. But that's about the only difference that there is. Boy, that thing just smoked that thing. Oh, yeah. When you're using bluegills, now I'm gonna take a few scales off so I can get that circle hook through there, kind of work that through. Now we caught these bluegills on the river in the back bayou right there. And uh, you know, you can use bluegills, but one thing you gotta remember is you can't have over your limit. You know, like panfish limit is 25, so if you go catch a bunch of bluegills for bait, you gotta make sure you don't have over your limit in the boat with you. You can only catch your limit. Typically when they start pulling a little, I leave the drag open so it's, you know, so it's like when they bite it's, and then when they when they have a consistent run with it, like I'll give them, I'll give them probably five pulls on it, and then I'll just I'll just hold it down, right even with the water, so there's no resistance again, so it's not changing. I, and I don't give them line, because when you give them line, then it just gives them more room to spit it out and such. So you just wait until it it's, gets real tight. And then when you can feel them on there, consistent weight on them, then, then you can set into them. That's, that's how I typically uh, you deal with a bite. But then if they just drop it a little bit and they, they just run with it, drop it, then you bring up the rod, just how I have it, and they don't you know, keep running with it, all I do is just go back to go back to what I did, put the clicker back on, give him a little bit of line so you're not giving him line or taking line from him because you, he might just be sitting on it. A lot of times they just sit on him and then they won't they won't take it back to their hole or underneath the trees. They'll just they'll just wait. So he's actually got the bait in his mouth you're saying? Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow. They'll just they'll just sit there with it. So it's better just to give them the time. Yep, just give them the to time try to pull that bait in and check it. Yep. Okay. Because if you take it away from them, they'll just swim on and do their own thing. But if you keep that bait, even if he spits it out, he'll be more prevalent to hit it again. Okay. Patience is the name. Of oh the game, yeah, right? that's the Patience. biggest name of the game. Just got here. You got one already? Yeah, it looks like a catfish. Catfish? Yeah. Not a very big one, but something. Something's better than nothing, huh? Yeah. 
Look at that stuff. It's a small flathead. It actually. is a flathead. Let's yep. show that. It. Yep, really small flathead. Hey, Quentin, I know we just caught this flathead, and I know that we're going to get a big flathead. You know, the other night when we were out here, you know, we had four on, we lost them, uh, caught a couple of nice catfish. But, you know, catching flathead isn't like a thing that uh, you just come out most of the time and just catch a whole bunch of them. I kind of kind of think of flathead fishing as like musky fishing, you know, instead of the 10,000 casts. So we just cast our four, five, six rods out here and sit here and, and BS about all the things about life and then wait for the fish to bite. So it's not quite as much work physically as it is until you get one on. Once you show the difference between a catfish and a flathead. A channel catfish will have a forked tail. As you can see, that's it's flat, like a okay. squared tail. Yep. And then the head is really, really flat. Like, like instead of a channel catfish, it has like a mound on it. And then these have uh, six barbells right here. This is what they're called. And catfish has, I think, eight. Okay nine of them that's the difference so that's about and then this one's like camel yep like camel they are color so cool looking yep you know and what is the size of them let's go over and people so people know when they come out and you should know the difference between a flathead and a, and a channel cat because on our system there is no size limit on channel cat but on flatheads there is strict regulations because they are the, everybody's after them nowadays you know between the set liners the bank liners and then guys like us that that like to do hook and line and sit and wait for the fish you know these fish are just they've really over the last 10 years there's a lot of pressure on these fish so what was a good thing the dnr did they put a slot lim limit on them now and tell us you know what is the slot limit 30 to 36 and 42 and up okay so you can keep them between 30 and 36 yep and 42 and up yep okay that's yep. great hey let's uh before we let this little guy go let's put him down so people can let's get a good shot of him Now, Quentin, you know, last time we were in this spot, you told me that where I threw my lines was the best spot, but I only had one fish on that night, and you had three on. Now, you already got a small one, had another bite. I'm starting to be a little bit suspicious here, you know? I might be old, but you know, I still, my brain still does function, just at a little bit slower rate. Things a guy's got to do for his kids, I'll tell you that. Stole half our rods. Stole half our bait, stole all the tackle. <laughs> yep. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> As you can see, we're fishing in some really deep water. A little stink bait just to kind of burn up some time here before it gets dark and maybe hook a catfish or two. That was something up there feeding, up there. I love this stuff. Little stinker, punch bait, Uncle Josh. I don't know why you guys are always turning your noses up to it. Stuff's not that bad. I got him. Good deal. All right, what do we got? Feel like a good fish? Yeah. Good fish, Quentin? Should, I think, yeah, it feels like one. Oh, oh, we got another one going. Oh my gosh. Oh, yep, another one going. It's getting crazy. Another what? one going. What the? I don't know what to do. You need the net too, right? Yeah. Got him? Oh. Holy. <laughs> What a great way on this gator tail, just to take these rods and go right through the bolt like this. And that's it. Keep you from moving left to right. I just need to clean my shoes. Everybody says my feet stink, I don't know why. Nice fish, quick. Look at that fish out there. Oh, hoo, 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 yeah. You are hot tonight. Yeah, this is a pretty big one here. That's a nice fish. Look at that big swirl up there. I'm gonna get the net for this one, buddy. Look at that, getting right in there. Yep, getting right in. There he is. Oh, yeah. There's a nice one. That's a really nice one. That's a nice fish. <laughs> nice job. When you're fishing for cats, you strictly use circle hooks. 
Yep. And, and explain why we're using a circle hook. Well, it's got that, just to explain the circle hook just a little bit. Yeah. It's just a basically shanked hook, but then the tip is just bent just ever so slightly. If you can see that against my shirt, if That's that makes perfect. it easier. Yep. It just has that little point. And a lot of people think, why did, why would they have a, why wouldn't they just run a straight hook? Is because when you're running down this way and the current's coming down and the fish grabs it like so, they turn with it and they pull it down. That's why the drag squeals. And then when you hook into them, they're running it down like this. Yep. And then when you pull the line, it'll hook them. It, it'll just it'll just hook them right in the corner of the mouth. So basically, you're not really setting no, the hook. No, just, pull, setting, just it's pulling it. The, it yep. It's hooking itself yep. by putting the pressure on it. Yep, you won't even need to even put any pressure to hook this hook a fish, but I just like to pull it just so it makes sure it hooks into the corner of the mouth there. Right, and the other part about circle hooks is, is I'm asking you, is it correct that the fish never have it down in their gut? No, it's never. It's always nope. in the side of their mouth, so it's a great way when you run and release these fish to release them too, yep. especially on flatheads because you know obviously you fish a lot of flatheads. You might keep a couple a year, but you lot a lot, you let a lot go. Yep. Plus there's a slot on them too, so you know makes a lot of sense to use a circle hook for sure. Yep, for sure. Quitting, you're on fire, man. This time I'm gonna get out there with that net a little farther. Nice fish, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. I think we'll be surprised what this one is. I have a feeling she's a flathead. Really? Yeah. But it could be a catfish though. Yeah, it's a catfish. Yeah. Mind. There we go. Nice job, Quentin. All right. Hold that baby up. You know. What we're using is we caught these bullheads in the slough here, and that's the nice part about having a boat like this because you know you can't catch bait on another body of water and bring it in. Even if you're on the same body of water, you can't like go into a channel and drive to the boat land. You have to catch that bait in on the, the same water on the same spot that you're fishing. So what I mean by that, you can't like go to a, this with your truck and go fish on the side of the road and catch some bait and then jump in your truck and then into your boat. You can't transport the bait like that. What you have to do is, and again, we're talking about this, a boat like this that can go into literally, you know, no water at all, just mud if you want to drive it in that. And we got back in these back sloughs and we were trying to get some dogfish, but we couldn't get any dogfish. But what we got here is we got some bullheads and we got some bluegills and basically we caught them hook and line and uh, what we're using here is a small bullhead and what I'm doing is I'm tail hooking them. So I'm basically just going back a little bit, putting the pressure on them. And what I do is I take the pliers and you know, people always talk about bullheads having stingers, you know, thinking the whiskers are the stingers and they're not, that's just the feelers for them. And what we do is we take a pliers, the stingers are actually right on the side right here. So what I do is I take a pliers and I just bend them, I broke these already, I break them off you know, just like that. So I broke them off so when the, when the flatheads come up and go to grab them, they don't feel that pointiness from the stingers on the side, which are the pectoral fins. So basically that's it. And the smalls, I kind of match the hook size with the size of bait I'm using. Quentin's got a little bit bigger bait, so he's using a little bit bigger hook, circle hook, and it works out pretty good. We're using kind of a slip sinker rig on here too. So the slip sinker comes down to the bait. And then basically, like he was showing on his rig, is that we're laying the rods flat across the boat so there's no resistance on them at all. And we just leave the clickers on. So after we cast it out there, we just have the clickers on. So all we're listening, and the rod's laying flat on the boat so there's no resistance there. And that's something that I learned from Quentin. I always had my rods and rod holders, you know, and he missed a lot of fish. But basically, we're laying it flat on the boat like this, and what you're hearing is all of a sudden you hear this. And then, you know, I let them do that a couple of times, and then we pick the rod up, you know, and, and get it so the drag doesn't go out. And then I usually let them make about three to four decent runs before we close, close it up, the bale up, lock the bale up, and then set the hook on it. You're on fire! This is a cut bait. 
Nice job. This might be a this might be our little buddy right here. Really? Yeah. Holy oh, man. That channel. Yeah. Channel. Yeah, big, big channel. Big channel. Yep. That, <laughs> that is sweet. That's a nice one though. Oh, that yep. is a big That is a big channel cat. Nice job, Quentin. Look at that fish. That's absolutely awesome. Boy, you know we don't have any lights on in the boat here except for our running lights. Um, not that we have to worry about anybody hitting us just because it's so shallow up here. Nobody, unless you got a motor like Quentin's got there, the gator tail, you're not going to get through here. But I'll tell you something. All you, all you can hear is when they grab it is that, that drag just going zzz, 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 and that is absolutely awesome. Nice fish. Again, nice job, buddy. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, let's see if we can get another one, one or two more. He's running like crazy with it. He's still going with it. Watch out that stick jam. There we go. Got him. Oh man, Got it's him. a big fish. That's a big fish. Big, big fish. I'll grab the net for you, I can't Larry. even move him. It's a big fish, Quentin. Yep, I got it. It's a big fish. I, I hope him. he doesn't get my other rod right there. It's a big fish. Might want to move, get that rod in. Look at that. That's a big fish, you guys. We've been waiting for a flathead, and this might be the flathead. Boy, we caught some dandy channel. That's a big fish. Oh, that's a big fish. That is a big, big, big fish. You guys, this is a big fish. This is a big fish. I got 100 pound test on here. I can hardly move this fish. Oh my gosh. Right here. Okay. Oh man, it's a big fish. Look at that fish. Look, I thought I had a big fish. Look at the size of that. Holy moly. Look at that, you guys. Look at the size of that turtle. Oh my gosh. Not that sucker once. Holy moly. I thought I had the monster flathead of the night on. Wow. I mean, that thing, absolutely, when I set the hook into that thing, holy moly. Look at the size of that, that snapper. Oh man, I, this guy would take your hand right off, you guys. Holy, I haven't seen one that big in a long time. Look at that. Oh, I can hardly hear him. Look at the size of that thing. Woo! Yeah, but right up. Yeah, look at that. You know something? I can tell you something right now. I'll guarantee you guys five bucks if I drop this flat, flat head on the floor, there'd be a camera guy and a Quentin on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> oh, Look at that thing. That is that is a big snapping turtle. Holy man! Look at the mouth on that. How would you shut? Oh, more! I thought I had my monster flathead. Gosh! Look at the size of that. that. Holy boy! I'm gonna get him out of the boat. Look at the the neck on that thing. Hey, you got me all wound up? I thought we had the monster flathead on it. There you go. Look at the head on that thing. Oop, get out of my line. I would not want to get bit by that, I can tell you that much. There, get out of here. Whew. Dang it! I'm like, wow. Holy moly. That is one nasty, nasty looking creature, I'll tell you that. I, you know what, before I was kind of wading around out there, I certainly would have to hate to have oh, yeah. that thing come up and take a bite out of my, you know, that's why I always say, 
you know, them crazy southerners that do that noodling where they get in the water and they stick their hands into them the banks and into them logs. Boy, I'll tell you, there ain't no way I'm sticking my hand in this water. No, no way. No. Man, that thing whooped me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Hey, Quentin, I want to thank you big time for the night and letting us experience what you experience all the time. You know, I say this all the time. People wonder why I'm so passionate about the outdoors. I'm passionate about the outdoors because I get to spend time with people like you that are the same way passionate for it. And, you know, the, the real thing about the outdoors and doing the things that we do, it's all about the experiences, you know. You just can't, there's not a word to describe how wonderful the experiences are when you spend time and enjoy the outdoors. Hey, and for Larry Smith, just remember, it was a great night to be alive. It was some type of moth, you know. I didn't, I, <clears throat> I didn't bring it. <coughs> I think I'd be better off with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs>